woman had our back. You. She always put us on the map. You. She nurtured us from a baby. Okay. So first she just look at that. You. Feeling great. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling good. Go and get your bread up. Why you feeling down? Go ahead and put your head up. Why you fed up? Why you stressed out? Yeah, I know you really messed up. But go and look around. Why you pressed up? Know you blessed up. Go ahead and fill your cup up with some lemonade. Cause when life gives you lemon, you block it like Russell Simmons. And just know that your life made with a clear shade. Cause I'm, I'm. content of this video like this video subscribe to my youtube channel so you're gonna really like this video <laughs> but um we're gonna get very controversial today we're gonna be dealing with the issues of interracial dating a particular person asked me what is the problem with interracial dating because they just want to personally know and i may have made a particular video about this a long time ago but Let's just do a little recap right now because this isn't going to be a long video prior to the other video <coughs> that I made concerning interracial dating that was very uh, prolonged, very long. So, the number one reason, right, and you know what, I have a little list right here on what I wanted to particularly talk about when it concerns these particular topics at hand. So number one, the number one reason why us as black men should not be uh, interracially dating, or what, what are the particular issues with interracial dating, is number one, the historical background behind interracial dating. The historical background behind interracial dating. You as a black man cannot tell me that a white woman better fits you than a black woman. Right? If you just look at the historical dynamics between you and the white woman, there is no reason for you to be with this particular woman. Why? Because she used you as a mandingo. She used you as a sex object. She used you, she took advantage of you, black man. She, her father, or her brother, or her uncle, or her brother, took advantage of you, black man, or your son, and emasculated you in front of people, in, in front of your family, emasculated you, buck break you, would lynch you, would castrate you, would beat you to a pulp. Will beat you to a pulp. Even as sometimes they will force you to suck the master, the slave master's penis. They will force you to do that. And within these perverted uh, sex farms that were on the slave plantations. Or even maybe not even on the slave plantation, maybe it was just out and about. You know, this is how perverted some of the slave masters were. But it was more common that the, the black man would be used and taken advantage of as a mandingo towards the slave master's daughter. And if you wasn't to do what she say, she would accuse you of rape and you would be lynched the next morning. Maybe not even the next morning, maybe in that very hour. This is what will happen to you, black man. Black woman, there will be times where you will have the baby and the slave master will beat you to a pulp and you might get a miscarriage. Or even worse, when you are already in eight months to nine months pregnant, the, the slave master will cut open your womb, will yank the baby out of your womb, and will put the baby on the ground and stump the baby out, the head of the baby, with the heel of his boot. This is what would happen during slavery. There would be times where the slave master would use you as a footstool. He would use you as a seat. He would use you to, do, to, to uh, take piggyback wires uh, for your child, for, the, for, for his child, to, to use you as a piggyback ride. When you was a slave, a house slave, you know, you would cook his, his dinners. 
you know. You would dress him up, you would iron his clothes, and then late at night, you would suck his dick. You would do something sexually pleasurable to him. You know, he will rape you because you didn't really have a choice on whether or not you wanted to have particular intimacy with this particular man. You know, he will force you to have intimacy with him. You know, he will turn you inside out, literally. You know, this is what was going on during slavery. So you as a black woman, why would you want to be with a particular person who is the reflection who is the image of white supremacy and the person who perpetrated so much trauma to you, that is Stockholm Syndrome. Because you as a black man, you as a black woman, you are genetically your ancestors. You are your ancestors. And whether you may have known it or not, you are your ancestors. And you may not have the memory that your ancestors have had, but based upon your DNA, there are certain things that you do. There are certain things that you say. There are certain things that you contribute to in your life that goes all the way back hundreds to maybe even thousands of years that your ancestors did. And who's to say that because you might have a, a, a natural, quote unquote, you might have a desire for white men or you might have a natural desire for white women, quote unquote, natural. Who's to say that these particular desires did not already come back or weren't already there, you know, within you that your ancestors did hundreds of years ago. You know, who's to say that, you know, you want to be dominated in bed by a white man? You know, who's to say that you don't uh, want to be dominated in bed by a white woman? You know, all these all these particular desires that you might have, you know, being with a, uh, a non-black woman or a non-black man, most of this derives from slavery. This is all coming from Stockholm Syndrome, where you have a particular desire and feeling for your oppressor, right? And no, I'm not saying that, you know, because you'll have these particular people that be like, well, the woman I'm with, the, the you know, their, their, their uh, family had nothing to do with slavery. You know, the, the, the man I'm with, he, he ain't had nothing to do with slavery. He never owned any slaves. He never owned no plantation, this, that, and the third, right? But his people did. But his ancestors did. He is the reflection. He is the image of those particular people who perpetrated so much trauma to your ancestors and you don't have enough respect for yourself. You don't have enough respect for your grandmother and your grandfather and their grandmother and their grandfather. You don't have enough respect for yourself, for yourself to preserve you, to preserve your blackness, to preserve your beauty, your hair, your ancestry and your heritage with another black man, black woman. Black men might say, well, we already mixed, you know, uh, we already mixed, you know, my grandmother, she was, she was mixed and, you know, well, we already got this and that in my blood and, you know, I'm about an eighth Irish, so, you know, if I'm already mixed, you know, why, why not? You know, and all these stupid rhetorics that we come up with just to be with our oppressor, right, or the, the person who reflects our oppressor, you know, why would you even want to do that? You're, if, if you're coming with the argument that you're already quote unquote mixed up, right? Why would you want to mix up yourself some more? Why would you want to contaminate what's already been there, right? Why would you want to contaminate some more? If you're a black man, right? And your great grandmother was was mixed, right? Why why would you want to contaminate, you know, your 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 blood? Why why don't you want to preserve it? Why don't you want to purify it? with more blackness, you know, get you a beautiful chocolate black woman so that you can have more blackness, so that you can have more beauty because your blackness is beauty. But a lot of us as black men, we don't see our blackness as beauty. That's why we want to go for a lighter complexion. Like, and I'm not saying this is the case at all or most of the time. So if you're a black man, you're with a lighter complexion black woman. That's not what I'm saying at all. But you have certain black men out here who will go after lighter complexion black women or mixed women or uh, uh, non-black women, right? Because they hate their reflection. They hate what they see in the mirror. They hate their curly, kinky hair, right? That's why most of them don't grow it out, you know, for the most part, not all the time. 
But you have these particular cases where you have black men who hate the reflection that they see in the mirror. They might have some bad issues with their mother. So they will, they don't want to date somebody who reflects their mother. They, they want to date somebody who is the opposite of the mother. The, a person who deflects their mother, right? Because you can't say that you love your mother and then you don't want to date somebody who reflects her, right? And I'm not saying reflect her physically, but I'm saying reflect her in terms of her spirit. You know, reflect her in terms of her traits. You know? So when it concerns us as black men, we can't disrespect our mother, our grandmother. We can't disrespect our ancestors and the lineage of the women and even our fathers. You know what I'm saying? Like, these white women would take advantage of our fathers, of our grandfathers. My great-great-grandfather on my mother's side was almost lynched because a white woman wanted to talk to him. Now, how do I look as being the great-great-grandson of my great-great-grandfather and I'm over here trying to mess with a white woman and my great-great-grandfather almost got killed? He almost became Emmett Till. My great-great-grandfather almost became Emmett Till because of a white woman wanting to talk to him. How do I look? How do I look? I would look like a fool. And I, I wouldn't have the, the guts or the nerves to try and uh, stand before him in the afterlife. You know, after me knowing what has happened to him in his life, you know, why, why would I want to, you know, give up my ancestry, lose my cultural identity? Because let me tell you what happens when you as a black man or a black woman procreate with a mix, uh, uh, a non-black man or a non-black woman. You know, you're committing racial genocide right there. Because those mixed children, 9 out of 10 at the time, are not going to procreate with somebody who reflects you. They're going to reflect somebody of their mother. Excuse me, or they're going to reflect somebody of their father, right? So, if those particular mixed people, they outside of their, of your race, right? If they date somebody who isn't black, you know, you're gone. You know, your lineage is gone. You're just going to be a distant memory. Oh, yeah, your great-great-grandfather was black. You know, that. so you got a little black in you, this, that, and the third, right? That's all you're going to be. You're just going to be a distant memory. If you are a black man or a black woman, and if you love who you are as a black man or a black woman, you want to preserve that which you love. You love your car. You don't want nobody getting in your car, so you lock your car. You preserve your car. You put a... You know, you put all these things on your car so nobody won't break in. And if somebody try and break in, you know, it's going to let everybody who's around know. You know, you have $1,000, $5,000 in your pocket. You, gonna, you ain't going to let everybody know. You're going to keep that preserved in your pocket, in your wallet. You ain't going to let nobody know. You want to preserve that, right? You have a new ring. You have a new watch. You have new clothes. You have new shoes. You're going to preserve those particular nice things, right? Because they have value to it. Now, how do you as a black man say that you have value and you love your blackness, but you don't want to preserve it? That means you don't see value in your blackness. That means you don't see value in who you are as an African man or African woman. How can you as a black man or black woman say that you have value? You have high quality value. You come from a descendants. You come from the descendants of greatness, right? Pure royalty, warriors, you know, scientists, astronomers, people who created uh, the, the writing systems that we use today, you know, even language. You know, and, and you have the nerves to give up all that, to give up your cultural identity, right, for another race because of these rhetorics that white people have gave you of love is love and love has no color and you can't help who you love. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. And I know I had a whole list, but just dealing with history in itself. Just dealing with the historical background in itself, you as a black man should not want to be with anybody else other than a black woman. It is historically accurate and it is spiritually accurate for you as a black man to be with a black woman. You see a Nike shoe, it's going to go with the other Nike shoe. You see an Adidas shoe, it's going to go with the other Adidas shoe. You have a black left glove, it's going to go with the right left glove. So for you as a black man, you was created for the black woman. And black woman, you was created for the black man. A zebra was created for a zebra. A lion was created for a lion. A red robber was created for a red robber. So why do you as a black man feel like that you wasn't created for the black woman? 
Why do you as a black woman feel like you wasn't created for the black man? Who has confused your mind to make you believe that you was created for somebody else that doesn't even reflect you, that doesn't even look like you? You know, was an eagle created for a buzzard? You know what I'm saying? Was a dog created for a cat? No. No. So why do you as a black man feel like you was created for a white woman? Why do you as a, a, a black woman feel like you was created for a white man? Who has confused you to believe that we are one race, the human race? Who has confused you to believe that we are all the same? Do you know who the original people are? <laughs> do you know who were the original people on this earth are? Who was created in the image of the Most High? Well, <laughs> that's all the time that I have for today. Don't want to go any more further than I have already have. Until next time, I'm Tyrone. Thank you for listening to what I just say. Like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Comment below about how you feel about what I just say. If you like what I just say, if you didn't like what I just say, let me know in the comment section below. Support my clothing line business and my website. That means the description box below. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Share this video with other people. Until next time, I am Tyrone. Hopefully, you got something out of this message. And I am out. I'm a true terrorist. I would never doubt that this is where. Where I belong. You see what I've become. What I've become. My life is moving so fast, so fast. My work is never done. It's never done, y'all. Through the looking glass, I see no time for looking back. The past is in the past, in the past, your future's in my grasp. In a place mentally like it's meant to be Heaven sent for me, the universal entity Drive matches intensity 